Okay, joining us now on the hotline is Sarah Kaufman, former Strike Force and Invicta FC Bantamweight champion, current PFL lightweight. How you doing, Sarah? Hi, good to see you. Good to see you too. Uh, first, I wanted to ask you how you're holding up a little bit. You know, I, I've been following you on social media. I see you're a dog lover, just like us. A little rhino, she's a cutie. Oh, she's pretty sweet. Yeah, she's uh, kind of right next to me here. We'll see if we can get her over. Um, we've been doing lots of, like outside time, so she's enjoying it. She's enjoying the sun, and uh, probably more so than myself. I'm not necessarily a sun lover, but I at least have a little bit of a a color now that we've we've been spending quite a lot of time outside instead of in the gym. But uh, I definitely can't wait to get back to it. I saw one of your posts. I think there was a deer, an owl. Uh, I forget what else, just on one walk alone. I have a Jack Russell Terrier, and there would have been some combat at some point, but your dog seemed to hold it together. Yeah, Rhino isn't, like, that affected for the most part by wildlife. She sometimes gets, you know, the little squirrels and things that run around. She'll bark at them, but she's not that bothered by it. And uh, the deer was pretty crazy. I mean, there are deer everywhere in Victoria, but um, – to, to have them kind of that calm and that close and walk towards us. And then they kind of chuffed at us. It was like, oh, I think we should go. And then uh, a baby owl was the first for me. So it, yeah, it was quite, quite the day. Was it white by the way, the owl, or was I, my eyes deceiving me? No. So yeah. So the baby owl is really downy. So it's like white downy, not really, I guess it's feathers, but they can't fly at that age. And um, yeah. yeah, so it was super cool. And, and then the, the mom, what, what I would assume was the mom that was protecting it, uh, I think was a great horned owl, but I'm not sure. Hmm, very interesting. All right, so Sarah, we've talked to a lot of fighters during this pandemic of COVID-19, and they're in a different boat than you are. Some are fighting actually on Saturday. Some are coming back in June or July, which is what Bellator's aiming for. You know, one championship has their timeline. PFL canceled the whole season. Now, to be fair, first it was just a hold. And it looked like there might be some sort of a postponement of a month or two. And then all of a sudden, when they looked at how this thing was unfolding, they just decided to cancel the whole season. So what did you think when you heard that announcement? Was it was it a big shocker to you? And did you, uh, I guess, un understand it and support PFL in, in their decision or think differently? Yeah, you know, I actually found out I had a, a reporter contact me and ask me my thoughts on it, and I hadn't even heard. I hadn't been online. Uh, I just recently, yesterday, got the internet in my house, so I'm moving towards uh, the, the new century that we're in. But, um, yeah, I, I didn't know until they contacted me. And, and it really it does make sense. Uh, the PFL, the biggest, the most unique, and the most exciting part of the PFL is their format. Uh, and it could not have been an easy decision going from what was a great PFL one into a build for PFL two. And I think that we now have a lot of buzz around the PFL. It's very exciting. There are a lot of big names uh, that are now part of the PFL that were signed on for season three. And so to have the postponement is hard, but it's very understandable given, you know, just the fact that we have 25 I think countries represented within the PFL. So to have that many different people flying in from different places, the logistics of all that travel and the safety and the precautions that uh, would need to be taken if it was even possible. Um, I understand it, it's hard to, as a fighter to know that you're not fighting potentially for a full year and that you're prepared for something that is now being moved. But I definitely understand where the PFL is coming from and, I respect the hard decision that they had to make uh, and that, you know, the, I think they took a lot of considerations uh, into the decision that they did make to move this season. I agree with a lot of what you said. They do have some momentum there going on, you know, especially on ESPN in year two. And now we have, you know, a new set of millionaires. We have a couple fighters that repeated. They had some free agent signings like fellow Victorian um Rory McDonald. Not uh, Victorian, but fellow Canadian Rory McDonald. Canadian, yeah. Well, the, the province is called Victoria, right? Or I don't uh, know. Okay. Close. I live in British Columbia as the province. Victoria. Ah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. So Rory is from British Columbia. Um, they signed OAM as well. They had some some pretty big signings. Yeah, Justin Willis, and so they they look like look at me trying to be a geography major here. I, <laughs> I call that one up, but 
Uh, yeah, they had some free agent signings. They were doing well, and so it could not have been an e easy decision. But they wanted to respect, I guess, the integrity of regular season, playoffs, championship. You know, so yes, like it's. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I really found this was last season was such a fun kind of place to participate and to fight and be a part of, uh, to have, to know that you're fighting twice in the regular season. Then if you make it, you get to go to the playoffs. And if you make that, you get the championships. Potentially for some of us, we're fighting five times within seven or eight months. So it's just such an exciting format, the point system, uh, how everything changes from one fight to the second fight and how you think one thing and something else happens. Um, so, yeah, I mean, they, there's no way that they could do that format in a truncated, shortened version. I'm sure they tried to come up with a way, but, um, I mean, the format is the most exciting thing uh, that I think has been innovated in the sport of MMA. They also stated they were going to try and look after their fighters, send you guys um, like a monthly stipend. Or something like that. Have you gotten yours? I still haven't gotten anything from Donald Trump. So I'm, you know, I don't know. Maybe you're ahead of me. Yeah, PFL has been really good about being in contact. And, um, you know, the CEO, Peter Murray, uh, he, I, at least for me, and I'm sure for a lot of other people, is taking the time to make sure that everyone gets contacted so we know what's going on. Um, they're working through all the, the process of a monthly stipend, which is very beneficial for a lot of the fighters uh, to have something coming in uh, monthly when they would have been fighting. Sarah, if the PFL were to contact you and say, what would, would, have, would have been your ideas? They said, Sarah, how can we save this? What can we do to make fights go on? Would you have had anything to add to the way they handled things? How would you have handled them? You know, I think with the, the uncertainty of so many factors, that made it much harder. Potentially in two weeks, maybe everything magically is back to normal and then the season could have continued as per normal. But potentially it could be July or August or September before things are in somewhat of a normal where it comes to international travel and bringing people and fighters safely in from all these places around the world. If you're just doing Canadian fighters or just doing American fighters or you're doing you know, fighters from set regions, I think you could get away with putting something together and being more certain as to the logistics of what that would do. But I think the uncertainty definitely plays a big factor in how they had to make their decision to push the season. Um, and, and I don't know that I would have come up with a different alternative, honestly. If possible, it would be great if, I, I don't know if this is a reality, but maybe I would try and push for even some super fights or some super cards later on in the year, um, just to keep fighters active and to keep the PFL having fights and building towards next season, what will now be 2021. That's something that maybe I would suggest if they're open to that, if that's a possibility, uh, there's so much still up in the air, but as a fighter, I for sure would love the opportunity to be able to fight prior to what's now 2021, given that I haven't fought since October of 2019. So what can a fighter right now in your situation where you live, what can you do to still remain in shape and, and keep the mind sharp as far as fighting goes? Uh, how much has the day-to-day -day training changed for you and what is it that you are able to do? For me, it's definitely changed uh, an incredible amount. I, well, I'm in our current gym. We just moved Zuma to a brand new facility as of March. Uh, we were open for two weeks and then we had to shut down. And so it's been going from very long, you know, 12, 13, 14 hour days where I'm training, I'm coaching, I'm doing office work to now having almost full days free. And so it is very different in that sense. I've been able to run, do weightlifting, modified weightlifting, because I'm not in my regular gym, but there's always still stuff you can do. I'm also fortunate that I've been running Zoom sessions, so online sessions, and that's been really positive. It's, it's incredible what just seeing familiar faces and working out at the same time does for myself and does for other people. And so I'm very fortunate that that's been a, something to fill my time give me purpose. Uh, I've been reading a lot more. I've been doing puzzles. 
Uh, I've been getting outside hiking. There, there's still a lot you can do, but I for sure miss, you know, the contact of hitting people, getting hit, wrestling, grappling. It's something that you know you love, but even more so, it, it's really made me realize how much I still am passionate about the sport and that uh, while running is fine, it is definitely not my exercise of choice. Can you, do you have to be a member of Zuma to participate in your Zoom sessions or is that for anybody? Uh, we're emailing it out to our Zuma members. And so anyone who wanted to be part of it, I'm more than happy to have them be part of it. We're not putting up uh, just like an open link, just so you're not getting weird, you know, unforeign the Zoom, you know, interruptions that were happening with some some groups. So we're not putting up an open link, but if anyone does want to participate, uh, they could send an email to myself or to Zuma and we can add you to the list. We're happy to have anyone involved. Um, and we actually, one of our students, her mom is a teacher and her mom asked if she could put, uh, put the link out to her students. So I've had a bunch of new, I think they're maybe grade five. So 11 or 12 year olds jumping into the kids sessions, um, not charging anyone, uh, just if they want to participate, they can participate. So that's been great to be able to kind of pass it forward and, and keep people active and motivated at a time where they might just be sitting at home. Sarah, if there's, if it looks like you may not be fighting till next spring, and let's say the pandemic kind of, I wouldn't say goes away, but let's just say things really, really um, under control subside. Yeah. And could you, does PFL give you any flexibility and maybe like a one-off at Ryzen, a one-off at Invicta FC, where you go, you fight another solid fighter like yourself, and then you come back and you still get, give yourself the four or five months you need to prepare for the 2021 season? That's something we haven't specifically spoken about um, at this point or wasn't addressed when we when they talked about postponing the season. Um, I, I definitely think that PFL is very reasonable, and so there's a chance they would be open to that if it was the right opportunity, uh, given that I fight I fight at 135 and I'm currently fighting at lightweight for the PFL. It's a big difference. And so uh, that's something that, I mean, maybe I will look into for sure a bit more to see if that is an option. But as of right now, uh, it doesn't seem like many promotions would be looking to get necessarily new fighters on their roster as everything right now is so up in the air. Um, but maybe fingers crossed PFL decides to put on, as they say, a, an extra show or an extra two shows. Uh, that would be something that in my mind would be amazing for me. And I'm sure a lot of other fighters, if there were the safety precautions and everyone was able to do this in a safe manner would likely be into, and I'm sure the fans would be into that as well. Uh, but that's something that I can't actually speak to on whether it will happen or not. Just something that I would like to see uh, and, and might suggest. In the future, I'd like to see you in some sort of a host role or backstage reporter role. I don't know when your career is over. You're very well spoken. You've spoken very nice on behalf of the company that you're working for right now, or maybe even on the, on the executive side. I don't know. It just seems like you are a lifelong martial artist. You want to stay involved when your career's over probably in, in martial arts somehow is have you even thought about those days it's hard it's not something that i necessarily think about all the time but as i've been in the sport for well since 2006 so for 14 years now it's it's been a long journey and i still am super passionate about it i really do think that i can be and am the best in the world when i'm at my peak and i don't think that i've necessarily reached that yet I do have more goals in the sport. Um, and so while I'm still very invested in being a fighter, I am also very interested in potentially doing some commentary or backstage work or something along those lines that you were, you were talking about. And I was hopefully going to be on some of the broadcast duties during the finale for the championship fights. And then it was a crazy whirlwind um, with Eve Levine getting sick and then Carolyn, she had um, a medical issue during the broadcast. And so it all really got uh, uh, very crazy. But unfortunately, or sorry, fortunately, everyone was all right. 
and PFL managed to, to, to run a pretty seamless show and had a great show, but I would definitely like to be looking into those avenues and I'm very open to the possibility of opportunities coming up. Thank you so much for the time today. It's great catching up with you. You seem to be in very good spirits considering, you know, it may be about a year until you fight again, but Either way, um, like we've covered in this interview, I think at least on my side goes, your side, we we all seem to be in agreement that preserving what PFL has built themselves on, no politics, you know, let the results speak for themselves over the course of a regular season and then playoffs and the, turn and the finales, it, it just needed to stay intact that way. So we'll just sit back and wait until all this unfolds. I think more important, let's save some lives first and then we'll resume you know, every promotion will resume, at, resume excuse me, at their own pace. And obviously we'll be here ready to cover it all. Uh, in the meantime, be safe out there in Vancouver. And, and thanks again for your time. Yeah, thanks so much. It's been great to, to talk with you. And while I'm looking forward to getting back to fighting, I'm looking forward to all sports retur returning. So I'm looking forward to, even though I don't follow them that much, all my friends who are supposed to be in the Olympics for rugby, for different sports. Uh, I'm just really excited for all sports to kind of get back going and for the world to to find a new, a new normalcy and kind of return to what, what we had before and maybe an altered version, but uh, still able to do what we all love to do. For sure. We're in agreement there. All right. Thanks for the time, Sarah. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.